Why, hello there. Welcome to Radio Frequency Interference in You. Now, I know the term radio frequency interference may seem like a big one, so to help everyone understand it a bit better, little Sally here is going to give us a hand. Hello to you, too. Little Sally is just like you. She likes to bake apple pies, get her homework done early, and always obeys her parents. And just like 262.7 other good Americans, little Sally owns her own cell phone. Boy, does she love to talk. Aha, now, little Sally, make sure you save some time for sleep. It's almost 8 p.m. As little Sally has gotten older, she has also gotten neater gadgets and even drives a car. But sometimes, little Sally notices something strange. If she gets a phone call near her computer or in her car or near speakers, a strange hum occurs right before the phone rings. Ha ha, no, no, little Sally, you aren't psychic. You are just experiencing radio frequency interference, or RFI. First off, what is radio frequency? Radio frequency refers to an electrical signal's rate of oscillation taking place from 3 to 3 to 10 times 10 to the 11 hertz, or cycles per second. This frequency range is used in the production and detection of radio waves. Don't worry, little Sally, it is a very complicated subject. Yes, Sally, even more complicated than making your award-winning pie crust. Think of a radio. You are able to listen to music on it, but how? Well, somewhere, each radio station has a big tower that sends out your favorite radio songs all over radio waves. These waves make their way to the antenna on your radio. The antenna then catches these waves and allows you to listen to all the latest hits, hear about the new must-have goodies no girl can go without, or share a laugh with Amos and Andy. Now you may be wondering, I have so many favorite stations. How does my radio know which waves to catch? Well, Sally, each radio station sends their waves out on their own particular frequency. In fact, that is what the numbers on your radio dial refer to. By sending their radio signals at a specific frequency, a station ensures that their program won't get mixed with those of another station. When you tune your radio to a desired station, you are not just choosing that station's frequency. No, you are actually straining out all the other undesired station's waves. The radio has what is called a bandpass filter. Just like how your colander keeps only the noodles, the radio's filter plays only the frequencies you have selected. As it turns out, all wireless electronic devices work in much the same way, each operating in their own frequency ranges so that they don't disturb the, disturb the other equipment. So, how do cell phones work? Well, little Sally, cell phones are actually just sophisticated radios. They too receive radio signals from a tower, and they too restrict received frequencies to those of tuned interest. But there are differences between cell phones and the radio little Sally listened to music on. Firstly, Unlike those radios, cell phones are duplex devices. This means they use two frequencies per call, one for talking and one for listening. Though sometimes little Sally seems to only have use for the one. Secondly, rather than having one tower per frequency that covers a large zone, each cell phone tower transmits many frequencies to a much smaller zone. Each of these small areas of operation is called a cell site, or cell. By dividing places into these smaller cells, a given frequency can be reused many times within a single city. So while each city only allots a specific number of frequencies for a cell phone use, there isn't ever an issue with not enough talk space. This is done by dividing the given frequency band into seven and designating each seventh of the range to one cell. This pattern is repeated over the entire area, so how is little Sally able to maintain a conversation over great distances? In order to accomplish this, cell towers pass Sally's call to the next cell as she moves. This means little Sally could hold a conversation that spanned hundreds of miles without ever being out of range. Each cell pairs most of its frequencies off for the talk-listen function of your cell phone. A certain amount of these frequencies, however, are saved just for communication between the tower and phones. These frequencies allow the tower to know where a phone is, tell the phone what frequencies to use for a call, and determine when the phone should be handed off to a new cell phone tower. So as little Sally moves, her cell phone's location is known, and as her current cell tower senses her phone signal weakening, the base station of the next cell sees it as increasing. Now the two stations will communicate, and once little Sally enters the next cell, her phone will be given a new frequency pair to operate on. 
But wait, little Sally, that's not the end of it. Oh, no. While we do know that cell phones act as antennas that transmit and receive radio waves, we still don't know why little Sally's speakers buzzed when she got a phone call. When we discussed Sally's radio isolating her desired station, we were talking about signal processing, or, in this case, manipulating waves. All electronics do some level of signal processing, and by its very nature, processing changes the original signal. This means that while the radio station sent its program at one specific frequency, the wave received will actually have power at frequency values a little above and a little below the transmission frequency, called sidebands. This isn't really a problem here as the filter cancels them out, but this is why when you tune slightly off station, you can still hear some of the program. Similarly, when Sally's phone is communicating with the tower, whether engaging in call setup, cell handoff, or phone positioning, the signals have these sidebands. As we mentioned before, electronic devices operate at their own frequencies. So shouldn't we be able to sift out the unwanted ones as we did with the radio? What a good point, little Sally. Electronic devices do filter out unwanted frequency ranges, just like little Sally's colander filtered out water. But what happens if little Sally accidentally boils two types of pasta that were around the same size and wanted to remove one? The colander will remove the water, but not the other type of pasta. That is a trickier process, and so is removing frequency noise that occurs in the device's operating range. Unfortunately, this is a rather frequent occurrence. The sidebands of the original signal can mix with the harmonics of nearby electronics. Should this happen, a signal falling in the nearby electronics frequency ranges can result. What is more, the common electronics of Little Sally's and most Americans' homes have a rich harmonic content, meaning that they can interfere over a very broad spectrum. In the case of the cell phones affecting the computer speakers, the wire to each speaker is acting like an antenna, and it picks up sidebands in the audible range. So be wary of what you do with that cell phone, Little Sally, and you too, everyone. Technology is important, and we should both love and respect its terrible power. Have a good night.